Hey guys, Richard Holdener here. The question is, how much is a change in AR worth on the hot side? Hello everybody, I'm Richard Holdner, and as always, welcome to the channel. Today we're going to find out what happens when we change the AR on the hot side of the turbo. We have our GTX 3584 RS turbo. We're going to run it first with a .83 AR. Then we're going to run it with a 121, a larger AR. What happens to the power curve when we change the AR? In addition to that, we're also going to throw in the G42 turbo. We're going to compare the smaller turbo with both the changes in AR to the larger turbo. All on a 5.3 liter, all on a chassis down, you know, the real world in our Turbo Tahoe equipped with the RHP Turbo Kit. So what happened? Let's find out. As a quick refresher, here are the components that went into the RHP Turbo Kit. With the manifold in place, it was time to install the GTX 3584 RS Turbo with the .83 housing. The install video might look a little weird because it's actually a removal video that we reversed. With the turbo in place, it was time for the discharge tube. Watch for the magic. We taught our discharge tubes to just jump right into place. Next up, we installed the oil drain line running from the bottom of the turbo down to the oil pan. After tightening the oil drain line, we installed the oil feed line, the high pressure line going to the turbo. Since getting cold air to the turbo is very important, we installed the cold air intake. Note that it drops down into an opening down below where we had the factory air box. Getting air into the turbo is very important, but so is getting all that exhaust out. So next we installed the downpipe. The downpipe featured a provision for either a factory or wideband O2 sensor. For this test, we ran the wideband. Jimmy, loading up with the 85. We like the 85. Nice shirt. We offer the 3584RS in both a T4 and a V-band flange. For this test, we only tested the V-band flange. After swapping the housings, okay, we got the GTX Okay, we've got the testing done on the GTX 3584 RS Turbo. Now, we're gonna swap it out and put on the big boy. G42 
Gene's gonna swap out the oil drain so we can put it on the other turbo. Go to our... Got our adapter. Yeah. So on this one, it's got a four inch downpipe. Gotta put the downpipe in first. Using the V-band, we bolted the turbo in place, then secured the downpipe. Next, Jimmy tightened the oil drain. Okay, I'll put the oil feed back on. So I guess it begs the question, why not just buy a 42 and a 35 84? That's right. Swap them at the track. We'll just swap them at the track. Ready? Yep. Discharge tube. Cold air. That's right. Okay, guys, very quickly before we get to the comparison in the power curves between the 0.83 AR, the 121 AR, and then also the G42 turbo, what I want to show you is this was the 0.83R run at different boost levels. We ran it as low as 4 pounds, and we ran it as high as 12 pounds, where this thing made over 500 horsepower and nearly 550 foot-pounds. In fact, we had to detune this thing at the torque peak. Basically, we wanted to take some of the torque away. But it could make a lot because it is very, very responsive in terms of boost and obviously torque production. What I wanted to point out is look at the way that this thing ramps up regardless of what we have the boost level set at. The ramp rate when we're doing this test on the chassis dyno, which is where we ran this, we ran it on a Dynacom, and we ran the Tahoe stock 5.3, basically other than injectors and a fuel pump and the turbo setup, stock intake manifold, stock drive-by-wire throttle body, stock heads, they were 862s. This was just really a, a real high mileage 5.3 liter. But the way that this thing ramped up, regardless of when the wastegate opened and produced some given boost level, the ramp rate was always the same. It was always the same with the 0.83. It was always the same with the 121. And it was always the same with the G42 turbo. So when we're doing a comparison, we actually did comparisons at high boost and low boost. And it's always the same. What we're seeing is consistent. So let's check out the results. Okay, guys, let's take a look at the results from our comparison of the AR, the 0.83 to the 121 AR on the 3584 RS turbo, the GTX turbo. And we're also going to compare it to the G42 turbo. Now, these are all run at 12 pounds. Basically, we had kind of maxed out our adjustable um, boost controller, the manual boost controller. And you can kind of see, I'll go ahead and label these so you can see uh, on the torque curves and on the horsepower curves. But basically what's going on here, and this is not really too surprising, is the bigger turbo, the G42, made more peak power at, at our 12 pounds. But what's important to look at is the smaller GTX 3584 RS turbo with the tight 8.3 AR made the most torque. In fact, we had the, we, purposely limited torque production on that because it wanted to make a lot more torque than this but we had to cut some timing out we were just concerned about the transmission and stuff so there's there's even more to be had there 
But really what I want you to look at is look at the three lines for the torque curve. Again, I'll go ahead and label those. What we can see as, and this should be not surprising really, is the 0.83 AR had the quickest boost response and it made the most torque all the way through the first part of the curve, all the way up to 5200 RPM. Next was the 121 AR made the next most powerful curve, basically the most average torque production in that range. And then the larger G42 uh, made obviously less power going up to that curve. Now it made more peak power once it got going, but the response rate on the bigger turbo is not as good as it is on the smaller turbo. And then the 121 AR, the response rate is not as good as the tighter A3. If we look at the other side of the 5200 line, we see the exactly the opposite. The bigger turbo made more power at the same boost level. The bigger AR, the 121 AR, made a little bit more power than the smaller 0.83. Now, what would happen is as we go up in power, if we were turning the boost up and making even more power from these turbos, this would get even more exaggerated. The bigger turbo would make a lot more power because it's capable of making 1200. We would run into the limit of the smaller turbo. And then the AR would show more of a change. You're always going to see the smaller AR be more responsive down low up to some point. In this case, it's 5200 RPM. But it would always make more power on the top. It's going to drop back pressure, basically. And it's going to be more efficient at some point, at some crossover. And we see that at 5,200 RPM. Now, the same thing happened when we ran this at lower boost. We also ran it at like four pounds. And we see the same thing. It's just the whole power curve was lower. It was only making about 350 horsepower in that case. But the bigger turbo makes just a little bit more the the... Bigger AR, the 121, makes a little bit more on the top, but always the tighter AR has a better boost response and has a better curve down low. I'm Richard Holder. Please make sure to like, like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff, and I'll keep testing.